uh, doubles as my home office and uh, sports center <laughs> for nice. watching whatever's on. Mm-hmm. It's a fun year, especially. I like who they yeah. drafted, and you know, once Draymond comes back, it'll be everything yeah, I, will be right. Yes, that's what I'm hoping. Yes. All right. Are we uh, expecting more uh, committee members? We are, but we have a quorum. So if you wanted to get started. Well, let's give another minute or two, give them a chance to catch up. see a copy maybe i just missed it but i was looking through my emails i did not see a copy of the agenda or the minutes for this meeting hmm i i thought i had sent that i mean I, I i thought i attached them did you receive the email about the agenda okay let me check with our it to make sure that you okay. that i've received blocked. them the other months but this month i just didn't we uh let me check with our it i'll get back to you okay thank you you can go to our city website and click the meeting agendas button at the lower right corner. Uh, AlbanyCA.org. And at the very, uh, towards the bottom, a blue button, meeting agendas. Yep, got it. If you click the HTML agenda packet, you should see the agenda along with all the attachments. Oh, interesting. I can see 2021. Let's see, did I go? Oh. Okay. Well, I'll just take it as uh, the items come up. I'll be surprised. Let me, see. <laughs> Let me see if I can sneak in a quick email to you. That's okay. Um, it's, it's okay. Well, I mean, uh, Member Carlton, you are presenting the first item. You're aware of that, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> It's going to be a short topic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we can call the meeting to order. Uh, can we uh, call the roll, please? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Just one moment. I got I got caught. All right. Um, committee member Carlton. Present. Committee member Chasty. Present. Committee member Green. Present. Committee member Hans Romero. I do not see. Uh, committee member Moss. Here. Uh, committee member Chile. I don't see yet. And then uh, Chair Abbott. And I'm present as well. All right. I would like to read the following statement. Uh, the city of Albany recognizes that we occupied the land originally protected by the confederated villages of the Lujan. We acknowledge the genocide that took place on these lands and must make strides to repay the moral debt that is owed to this indigenous people, specifically the Ohlone tribe. We thank them for their contributions which have transformed our community and will continue to bring forth growth and unity. The city of Albany commits to sustaining ongoing relationships with the tribe and together build a better future for all that now make this their home. All right. With that uh, behind us, we can uh, review the minutes, approval of the minutes. Mm -hmm. So see, uh, committee member Carlton. Abstain. Mm -hmm. uh, comm committee member Green. Oh, sorry. Committee member Chasty. I apologize. Aye. Committee member Green. Aye. Uh, committee member Moss. Aye. And Chair Abbott. And that's an aye for me. All right. Now, I just you. mentioned that uh, normal procedures to have somebody actually move the minutes in second. Oh, that's minutes. true. Right. We do normally, yeah, let's we revert. Do normally let's do let's go back and do that. Yeah, that that's, that's a good point. Are, are you moving then, uh, Member Chasty? Uh, I guess I am. All right. Very I'll, good. I'll second. Very okay. good. Thank you. Okay, committee member Carlton. Abstain. Committee member Chasty. Aye. Committee member Green. Aye. Committee member Moss. Aye. And Chair Abbott. I really want to say no now, but I'm going to say aye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Member Chasty. <laughs> Moving on into public comment. Actually, I don't have uh, my little screen up here. I'm not sure we have folks. Yeah, we have a couple of attendees. So, Anybody who uh, would like to make a comment about an item that is not on the agenda, now is your time. There's not so much we can say about it, we'll, but we will certainly appreciate your comment. And not seeing anyone, last chance. Okay, 
Very good. Uh, announcements, any announcements from staff or committee members? So I have one announcement. Um, so the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 ARPA funding for a temporary COVID small business assistance grant program was approved by city council at their February 7th meeting. And we're in the process of putting uh, the grant application and outreach to materials together and look forward to offering that program to Albany businesses in the very near future. Great. Yes. Uh, I see uh, member Chasty with a hand. Uh, yes, I have to say it's been great working with everybody, but I may have to step off the committee. The reason is that the uh, there is a proposal to build a uh, four or five story, depending upon which part of the building you're at, building next door to mine, 1600 Solano. I'm at 1604. And because I'm within 500 feet, it's likely to be deemed to be a conflict of interest to me for me to be either taking action, advising, participating in conversations about this, or in outreach to the staff and discussing these things with the staff. And I have a lot of um, thoughts and opinions about the direction of Solano. So I don't think I'll be able to offer them as a member of this committee. I would be able to offer them as a member of the public to this committee and other committees. And I think that'll probably be what I'll have to do. Anyway, there's nothing today on the agenda regarding 1600, so I can proceed with what we're doing today, but I'll probably have to step off the committee. And if I do, it'll be with longing in my heart for all of you. You've been such a wonderful part of what goes on. Well, I appreciate that very much, and I'm very sorry to hear that, but uh, we, we uh, appreciate you being responsible about this and being proactive. Uh, all right, other uh, announcements? Not seeing any, we can move right on over it then to item, uh, let's see, five uh, presentations. I believe we have a presentation tonight. Mm -hmm. Member Carlton. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just promoting Chris Gillis to panelist. And there he is now. So uh, what I want to say um, prior to introducing Chris is um, the city entered a contract with GIS planning to offer the Zoom prospector platform. And this will allow Albany to provide information to Albany businesses and prospective businesses on available retail, restaurant, and office spaces in the city, as well as information on demographics, the labor force, and consumer expenditures. Along with this, any member of the business community will be able to pull customizable reports, charts, maps, and infographics on local business and industries, uh, wages, talent pool, and uh, this page will be linked to uh, the City of Albany website. So it's gonna be easily accessible for everyone. Uh, we will conduct an outreach campaign informing Albany business owners about this tool, which will include the City e-newsletter, uh, social media marketing, and direct outreach to business owners. It's exciting that we'll be able to offer this resource uh, to the business community, and it will be an important element to promote economic development in Albany, and we look forward to providing more uh, things like this in the near future. And with that, I'd like to introduce Chris Gillis of GIS Planning. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Brendan. That was excellent. I don't even know if I need to give anything else, um, but I will. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go through the application that Brendan just mentioned. It's called Zoom Prospector. It's soon to go on the city's website. I'm going to do a very high level overview and then allow time for questions from the committee or um, if there's any comments as well. So with that, let's see if I can successfully share a screen and jump in. So overall, this is the tool here. It is set specifically for the city of Albany. This is not about El Cerrito or Berkeley or anything like that. So it's all about Albany here. Um, there's an option um, straight up front for real estate, but there's a whole bunch of community, community data here. And not only is the community data focused uh, on Albany, but we'll look at how we're gonna get beyond that into the East Bay and even uh, Peninsula and so forth. But. Um, very easy to add properties. Brendan's been adding some. There's an option for um, private business owners and real estate agents to add their own. But overall, um, we can search for properties here. There's a various numbers of filters and search for types as well. Um, if for some reason, now I know Albany, former recent East Bay resident here, industrial is not your biggest focus. If say this category doesn't work for you and you already want to add another one, these can be uh, changed and they're flexible. But when we look at an individual property, we're showing you where in the world that property is, 
giving you some details about that property. But then behind that, there's a whole bunch of other reports. And I wanna step through these four properties as well as for the community of Albany itself. So if I'm looking at this property in a radius around it, say eight miles is what I've chosen here. I'm gonna be able to look at data we've cobbled together in those census block groups and put it in a total. So 650,000 people basically are within um, this radius here. Um, anytime you see a share button here, you're going to be able to share this. So this may be something that appears in a committee report. This can be something that shares in the newsletter or community members can share this as well. Some of the other data involved, um, you know, we can do a radius around a property, but we can also do a drive time. So here's a 20 minute drive time by truck uh, for the labor force report here. Now with all these reports, the occupation data here, this essentially is what can I expect uh, to pay certain occupations um, in these areas. This data is by zip code and county level. It's updated every six months. The demographic data, the labor force data and the consumer expenditure data, these three, and we just looked at two reports here. Here's a third. This is um, original source from the American Community Survey data. Um, our provider does a little transformation to get a little more accurate for the current year estimate. We also have estimates for five years out as well. You'll notice this says 2021. Um, if you've been paying attention, we are in the next year. We are about to have an update here uh, to reflect that. So this gets updated every six months, twice a year here. We also have a wages report from the Bureau of Labor Statistics as well. It's kind of the other side of the coin for the occupation data, or maybe even the same side of the coin there. This is by metro area and county for this one. Um, I'll come back to the business and the talent ones and a couple others, um, but the business data we get from our provider data axle, and we try to update that in real time through a direct connection with them. The talent data we'll look at here in a minute is an annual update from a federal source of degrees granted there. Um, the business data. So I just said this is from our partner data axle here. The city has the ability to create custom clusters here. So whatever the focus they wanna put on this, uh, they can do that. I'm looking at the same property we did before, an eight mile radius for the biotech cluster here. So I can come in and start looking at some of these specific um, businesses. Estimated sales and number of employees there. I don't need to say it, but the East Bay is not hurting as far as an area for talents and um, great business, but sometimes you need data to tell that story. Well, this will allow that right here. There's other search options by individual NAICS codes or the estimated revenue or estimated number of employees too. Let's see, let's jump into the community side of things. So that was a property. You know, we do around a property, we do around a radius or a drive time because it's not, you know, relevant whether it's, you know, what's necessarily inside the city of Albany, customers, people are going to come inside and out. But for the city itself, we want to explain some basic data about that. So we have a community profile. How many, where are they working? What sort of smarts are here and so forth? But we repeat all those same uh, reports you saw before. So if we're going to look at, say, the business report, I can turn on those clusters. Um, this one I put on the biotech and healthcare, and it's showing me the businesses within or very near the city limits here. If I look at um, the talent report, this is going to be a radius around either the community or the property, because simply... The community doesn't matter much in terms of talent. People are going out and getting educated. What we wanna show here is what locally nearby is producing current talent. So here we have top programs, uh, top universities here, and this is a 60 mile radius. And then we're looking down into specific degrees granted here. So if someone comes to Albany and says, you know, I'm a medical supply company, I wanna make sure there's enough RNs being produced here to meet my business uh, criteria, you're most likely gonna be saying, yes, this is happening for you. This is what's produced locally in the community here, okay? Another option for displaying data. So there's a community here where we can see all this data. There's a property where we can see this data. But what if you wanna do, you know, what would I do if I was in the city at a specific inter intersection, say San Pablo and um, 
Solano. Well, great. We have a way where it's very simply you can put a pin down there and reproduce some of these reports. So on the map, there's a pinpoint tool here. I placed that and generated a business report within eight miles. I'm choosing eight miles here just because it keeps me out of the city. Um, but I've chosen the food uh, processing cluster here. So it's showing me the Northern East Bay here and that cluster. If I wanted to share this, I click on this button, grab this URL and head off to town wherever I need to share that. Okay. The same would work, say, if I wanted to look at talent in a, you know, boom, I can come in around that point and I can look if I want to really narrow down again, eight miles here. I can look at my top universities and see what those look like. Finally, up in the top here, there's a compare, compare communities one. So um, say Brendan gets a lot of questions like, what about El Cerrito? What about, you know, Hayward? What about, you know, San Leandro? Well, he can stack up a comparison of various communities here. So I built in Emeryville, Esperante, El Cerrito, and San Leandro here. Um, you do have to start with Albany. Albany has to be in the mix. I can't go off and compare five Virginia communities and kind of get a free ride here. So here I'm seeing these communities here. I look at those basic demographics for each one there where the river really starts to hit the road because San Leandro is just bigger. That's fine. Um, but if I want to look at businesses by type, I'm going to see, you know, for heavy construction, Albany competes pretty well on most of these here. Some of the places where there's a little cheaper land, sure there's more, but, you know, you've got the numbers to start talking about that in terms of, you know, attracting business, what's here, what would be competitive here. So it's really easy to build that comparison there and share that. It's also super easy to remove any of those. If I wanna kick San Leandro out, that will update it here and I'll be able to have that. And guess what? My share button is still here as always. Um, really quickly, I won't get into the details of adding properties, but there is a back end that is very simple to add properties there. We do have a whole help section. Um, Brendan as in city staff have access to me and my team and for detailed questions for their training. If we need to do more meetings like this, um, we're happy to have that. Let's say you're soon to get a new another committee member. Um, we could do another training uh, for the whole committee, say six months down the road or something. And then finally, there's Zoom Prospector University. I know many of you are excited to get a little more education. Well, this is an option if you have access to the admin. It goes through at kind of a nerd level in short little videos of everything that you'd possibly want to know there. And folks, that's it in a nutshell there in about 10 minutes or so. I'm happy to take questions or any comments there. Brennan, if you want to add anything, by all means, jump in as well. I, I think you summarized it well, and I think well, opening it to questions makes sense. All right, uh, thank you very much, Chris and, and uh, Brennan, and we'll bring it back uh, to the committee for any uh, questions you have before we go for public comment. And, and welcome member Hans Romero, I understand traffic was bad, sorry about that. Not seeing any particular questions. I did have a question. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, admin level access. So what, who, who is gonna have admin level access? Uh, so Brendan City staff will and have access for the whole uh, shebang there. So they'll have access to all the features. For local agents that want to add their own real estate, they will uh, be able to see, have access to add those individual properties but they won't have access to the same things that city staff does in terms of um, preparing proposals and outreach to uh, clients and prospects. And, and a property owner could kind of be on the same level as an agent, that sort of thing? Correct, correct, yes. And I assume uh, Brennan or another staff would be the one who would provide that access. Correct, it's very easy, just come in here, they're gonna add a user, enter their name, email, it will get them an automatically generated email where they can log in and they'll be able to go to town. And then one more question, the uh, the Zoom University, uh, you mentioned that and <laughs> yes. that's for people with 
the bag. Is that primarily the back end stuff? So so the fact that it's only for admin level, that's fine because nobody so, else really has access. Great question. So Zoom Prospector University, I mean, this is my concept here. It's not an official institution or training program by any means, but um, I'm happy to send you a postcard that you have completed it if you want. It, this takes the front end and the back end all together here. In our help center, if you search for things like adding properties or searches, you'll get individual articles related to those specific searches. So. And for for just the business owner who's just trying to access some of this information, there are also resources for them, but they, they can access this or? Correct, correct. So okay. Zoom okay. Prospector University, everything in this page is somewhere else in that help center. So okay. this just okay. adds it all together. We have tried to make it simple enough where you click on something you should be able to figure it out. But if you do have questions, there is the help option on the front end. All right, very good. I, I see we have a couple more hands now. Uh, a member hands from there. Hi, yeah, sorry, I know I'm coming in late here. Uh, one, one question um, that I have is, it seems like it's set up more so for listings and availabilities, but is there a partnership on the front end of like actually having um, prospects of businesses that, uh, a list of businesses that we could source out of to kind of match that together? Kind of like, um, for example, like, in um, staffing, you know, if you've got the talent and you've got the prospect and you're matching them together, this seems like it's just one-sided. Is it, am I correct in that or help me, help me understand? Well, we do put, we do put properties first because they, you know, they're colorful and they're all different, but I think maybe I'm understanding your question. Let me know if you're I'm wrong here, but at the community level. So say we come into our community and someone's asking about in Albany, where are some talent here? We can come in and look at the businesses that exist within there. Say, let's take healthcare, for example. And, you know, these are the existing businesses and the categories they're within. Now, Albany is the center of the world, but there's a whole bunch of things around it. I can use that pinpoint tool I mentioned earlier and uh, broaden that up a little bit here. So let's look at 10 miles and let's go with that same category of healthcare here. Um, so this is something the city could start having a discussion about mm -hmm. like, well, hey, what does healthcare look like in the East Bay? And these are based on NAICS codes the individual businesses that are associated with those. So you can say, hey, there's some clustering here, there, and you know, start talking about what those needs are and how Albany can fit those. Does that um, kind of get your no, question? Well, more so along the lines of like, say for example, we have you know, five vacancies on Solano Avenue and mm -hmm. say we wanna find the best business to fit that vacancy. I don't think that necessarily we compare so much yeah. with an apples to apples comparison of some of these other cities that are surround us because our infrastructure is much smaller. We don't have a lot of the same. So it really doesn't fit, you know, Albany being one square mile really doesn't com compete to like, right. oh, we want to try to identify where the healthcare is, is there and, right. and have that same fit and feel here because we just don't have it. It's not, not available. Got it. I understand it. Well, one of your selling points is you have far better lunch options than anyone else. Ever. So don't, <laughs> don't think that you're small. You have a problem here. Um, but no, so there's a great question there and it's really, you know, this, if this could be answered easily, you know, real estate agents would have such an easier time. Wouldn't they? The realtors would just be like open and close. We're done. We're done. We're done. So there are ways, and we can work with Brennan in the city, like to promote certain types of available spaces, talk about ways to say in social media, like, hey, we have some, you know, spaces for startups that are smaller. You can be, you know, again, you've got great lunch, you've got a smaller space as you begin to grow. This could be a various options for you and you're not paying those Oakland and San Francisco square footage charges there. So we can work to, you know, help flesh like ideas like this, how would I market these types of spaces? Um, you know, say these three versus out of uh, seven or something like that. So I think it's really about using the tool combined with some marketing and social media to let uh, people know, hey, there is space here and it's just not happening in Soma and downtown Oakland. 
Yeah, well, and that's what I think that we were really trying to get at was yeah. to say, hey, identify these vacancies and look for the biz businesses to partner and match up to. So I think more so my, my you know, and I, I'm actually a real estate agent, but I do more residential, but, um, but we're looking more so for having um, kind of the pool of businesses that are looking for spaces and be able to, to match those businesses yeah. are our vacancies. Yeah, and Brendan, your, your role at PIO, you might have an, an ideas here, but I think it's about letting people know like, hey, Albany is here. It does have space. You know, Solano is just not shopping and restaurants, but there is office spaces available and it is a great place to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of yeah. that will be in the promotion. And, and this offers an excellent way to, to promote what we have, I understand what you what your um, what what the question you had, uh, Member Hanson Romero, and I think that what we're looking at here is 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 a way to empower the business owners to to find out what is um, you know what 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 are the advantages of Albany, and and this provides them with that information that's easily accessible. And then and then I would just say staff and and we as mm -hmm. well could try to put things together as best we can. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I know it. Member Hanson Romero is asking about it as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and any, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. If I can, Member Hanson Romero, there is an option to build very quickly a little proposal, and essentially it takes the properties, and you can build, um, you know, essentially like a little micro website, put in a welcome letter, put in some um, relevant information about for that business, and it's kind of, it's a way to share that information directly with a particular uh, client or prospective tenant. Um, so the city does that have that ability and Brennan will be up to speed on that shortly. But that's another way too, is like, you know, you could build a generic proposal for say a small office space. And that could be something they have right away and just share that link over and over. That, that proposal has links back into here into this Zoom prospector information. Okay, uh, any other questions, uh, Member Hanson Mayor? I, I mean, you're, you're fine. I'll, yeah, I'll okay. pass for right now. Let, let others right, talk. Okay. I mean, I still have my hesitation on this. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Member Moss. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Um, not being all that advanced in um, uh, issues around software like this, this is uh, all new to me. And I'm sure some time spent in on the un Zoom University would be helpful. But a, a, a Quick reaction question. Your mm -hmm. kind of go-to radius there was eight miles. Right. Uh, but you could make that smaller, I presume? I can uh, go down to one mile is the smallest and I can go up to 60 miles here. Okay. Because, so. it, I mean, it certainly occurs to me if, if you're trying to see what the demographics are of people that come here to shop or eat out or um, right. uh, do anything in Albany, you know, after maybe a couple of miles, I bet that drops off considerably. Correct. Uh, and, so here, and, here, for example, a 20 minute walking time. Okay, so you, and you do do this by uh, a walkable, yes. you know, distance, which I uh, particularly appreciate. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's my quick question and, and but I'm, Curious to hear what others have to say. I, I, I think I would enjoy kind of looking at some of the information provided in your your Zoom uh, university uh, uh, connection. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Sure. Yeah. And these these radiuses I'm looking at, I'm choosing simply eight miles so I don't touch the city. It just kind of skirts the edge there. That's the only reason why it's eight miles. You can go up to, uh, oops, excuse me, let me fix the screen here, up to 60 miles or minutes. And the minutes is by automobile, truck, or uh, person uh, walking. And then uh, you can choose the time of day as well. Um, so. Okay. Very helpful. Thank you. And I see a hand from Member Carlton. Can you change, just looking at those different modes of transportation, mm -hmm. um, can more be added there, like public transit options? That's a great question. Um, so we, and I got bike recently as well. Yeah. Um, maybe Brendan, that was with you. Um, we just have these three options here. This is a 
provider that only provides those three options so far. If they become available in the future, um, bike would be a great one there. Transportation gets a little weird because it's a train, bus, you know, how do you get all that worked out? Uh, but it, as ones become available, we would love to add them. Right now, we've just got these three. Thank you. Uh, and I've, I'm noticing the, uh, the filter area looks like you can draw on the map. Is that a way to have a, a non-circular focus area? So the filter area is sorted for um, the real estate search here. So let's say I wanted to look on uh, San Pablo here. I could draw a quick filter. That's going to get me those properties associated with that. If I wanted to look up Solano, I could do that. Or if there's something off here off Buchanan, I could do that. So that is for the real estate one there. And the All same right, with the filter good. radius there. Got it. Okay, very good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, uh, now I, I notice this is live. I mean, I can load it up on my computer now. Is it ready? Can we start promoting this now or? This, Brendan, you can go ahead. This is all ready to go. It's just not on the city's website yet. Correct. Yeah, we wanted to make sure the EDC saw it before we uh, made it officially live. But yeah, I mean, you can you can actually go on it and, and kind of mess around with it on your own at this point. Yes. And, and we plan to make it live very, very shortly. Again, we just wanted to present it to the EDC first. All right. Very good. Any other questions before we go uh, open it up for public comment? Not seeing any. Uh, we are then open for public comment. Mm. See if anybody wishes to speak. I see we do have one person still listening in. And I'm not seeing a hand appear. So we will, oh, wait a we minute. Do no, have a now hand. I see hand appear. There we go. Very good. Okay. We will welcome this caller in. I'm asking them to unmute. They should be unmuted. Okay. okay. Uh, are you able to hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, this uh, quality is probably not gonna be very good. I'm in transit. I meant to be back in front of my computer. Uh, uh, caveats aside, uh, so I have a number of questions. Uh, this is Nick Phillips, by the way, Albany resident. Um, my questions would be, is this uh, the same tool that people, certain members of the committee were looking at previously, or is it a different tool? Uh, and if it's a different tool um, or in any case, uh, who selected the tool? Was it staff? Um, and was it uh, the selection of the tool put out to bid? Uh, and if not, why not? And um, is this tool going to give the committee the data that the committee wants to have? Uh, all the different sort of demographic data and business data that the, that the, the committee's been looking for. For example, is this tool gonna, going to be able to tell you that a bunch of coffee shops, for example, opened up in Albany and they all did well, so we can encourage more coffee shops, or, or is this a much more uh, crude, if you will, tool that is, is just listing open businesses or open uh, facilities that can be reached? Um, those are my questions. Thank you. Okay. Do you want to answer that, Brennan, or do you want me to take a stab? Or yeah, so basically um, what this here, let me, sorry, let me just uh, lower the hand really quick. So this offers elements of what the EDC was looking for, and it offers it in a way that is open to the public and accessible to the public. And it's going to make it easier for the economic development, I mean, for myself as economic development staff to be able to present information to businesses and also provide, you can embed some of the widgets of Zoom Prospector onto the website to make it really easy to kind of just point them to the a very specific thing that you want them to look at. So it does offer elements um, and it, it, it's not mutually exclusive to what the uh, EDC was asking for, but we think that this is a really good first step as far as creating a platform to basically introduce economic development in Albany and say, we want, it, we want a place for people to go to receive information. And you know this will pair with um, a website that we're working on for economic development. And so we just wanna create that hub that makes it so when a business is interested, they have a place to go and they have a place to see information for themselves. Um, this didn't go out to bid. The price was low enough where it didn't, it didn't need to. And this was something that we identified 
prior to that that we think will be important for offering outreach to businesses and, and insight to businesses. So again, it's not mutually exclusive to the to the uh, to what the EDC was looking for, but it does provide a lot of elements that are more available again to the public. And then Chris Gillis, you're back, and you have your hand raised. Yes. So um, I know what happened. My computer, home internet, modern times. So I'm on my phone here. I'm not sure what the question was, but right as they unmuted, <laughs> that's when everything froze. So I'm happy to answer that question verbally if, um, if that's still a question. It was more directed to staff, I believe. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I am here for the remainder. So apologize for living in the modern age. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I see. Uh, okay, I think we can bring it back to the uh, committee then and open for discussion. And Member Hanson mm -hmm. Romero. Hi, yeah. So, yeah, I am a little disappointed. I, I, I'm not going to lie. Um, it doesn't seem like it's as uh, broad scoped as what we were hoping to get. I feel like there's uh, some definite pieces of information that I really were was hoping that we would be able to utilize and seeing reports from, um, you know, the other other companies out there and stuff like that. I, I'm I'm a little disappointed that this ended up getting done without even, mm -hmm. you know, consulting with us first. I think, yeah. Yeah. So one thing I again, th this is not mutually exclusive to what the EDC has requested. Again, we want to build that hub first because. I mean, if you're referring to the the previous item that we were uh, that we reviewed a few months back, that data is much more it's 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 much more focused, and it's not really something that is presented to the public. It's more for internal use for the city, for business organizations like the Chamber of Commerce. Um, this is something that's available to everyone, so they can um, access the information themselves. What the what like some and, and I'll just reference what we talked about like Buxton or Placer AI that offers a different type of insight and this is something that is compare with our website it can pair with um, any marketing outreach that we want to do so I would generate a little bit of separation between what this is and what you are asking for because even though there's a lot that's offered there there in slight, there's for slightly different uses. Yeah, I, I, I think um, I'm. I think we're still intending to present our proposal to council and 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 hope that the consumer analytics goes forward, um, because this does serve as a an excellent tool for people just interested in browsing. You know what what's going on in Albany? Can we you know just and and businesses themselves to see uh, some demographic information? So it is a very different tool, and it was you know, dramatically less expensive. So it was something that could just be done. Um, it, it, it didn't need council approval. It didn't need a, a, an RFP process. So again, I, I see this with, with, as Brennan was saying, as kind of building more like a tool for the website than a replacement or substitution for what we were proposing and, and continue to propose. And I see a hand from Member Green. Um, I was just going to reiterate what you're saying, actually. I think it's a very useful tool for someone who's trying to figure out. Um, I was trying to find space for the business that I manage about a year ago, and it was really hard to figure out, like, it's a restaurant and how restaurants do in different towns and, you know, what's, you know, like, Anyway, square footage, all of that. This is like an apartments.com for businesses, which can be really, really helpful when you're trying to get an overview of where to situate yourself. So I think, you know, especially all the better that it didn't cost that much. And, and I would just ask Brennan to, uh, or, or perhaps uh, Chris, to explain where the property data comes from. Oh, yeah. So the property data is it comes from the East Bay EDA. So COSTAR is we 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 can put in a request for that data. They provide the data and then we update it. Um, and that's just something I can update very quite easily. And so it, it's it's not it, it doesn't require too much uh, time to manage and to continuously update. 
All right, uh, other comments or questions? Oh, and additionally, the other thing too is inter, you know, having this be available for businesses or, or uh, uh, basically to log in and put that information up themselves, that's the other benefit. So it creates even less staff time. This is something that anyone can kind of do if they reach out to me. All right, other uh, input, feedback, comments? I think I've just said the same thing three different ways. I see Member Moss has a hand up. Okay, I, I, you know, I, I feel like I'm really coming to the party late on this because I wasn't around for the that earlier discussion you had about what you were looking for, particularly. But is if if you could help me get this right. I'm, I presume this is, is basically set up for businesses that are looking for a place to establish themselves, restaurants, healthcare, whatever. Uh, and they'll come and they'll say, well, what about Albany? And then this is all, you know, on, on that focus. But um, there, this is not particularly helpful to say property owners, particularly commercial property owners who are you know, trying to figure out how to reach out to businesses. Now, I guess this is what Jennifer was asking, or perhaps what Jennifer was asking on on some level. It, it, it's kind of a one way thing here. As as far as uh, I mean, because uh, Member Hanson Romero was talking about collecting data to decide on what type of business would be, or which specific if if there's a business in a different area looking to expand, wh where can they find that information? This is good for property, I mean, for uh, what's it called commercial real estate agents in terms of saying, here's the property we have, here's some economic data that's just available and accessible, and then they could just send it um, to any prospective business that they might be interested in. So, so the, it's, it's, it's good for the outreach part of it. Okay, but it, there's, it, it'll say if I were a property owner on Solano Avenue and I wanted to find tenants, would would I be able to get information uh, as to how what to do to my property or how I you know who I might be reaching out to in order to get somebody in there? It it will be helpful in that regards. I mean, I, I I can jump in a little bit. A couple of things I'd say is is the data is there. Um, maybe not as fine grained as, as, as what we were talking about, but there is data there that could be useful, but it's going to be up to the property owner to figure out what would fit well here and what, what sort of business do I want here. Uh, the way I think we should think of this is if you go to any, any cities or even Chamber of Commerce website and look at opening a business here, you're going to see demographic data. It's often 10 years old. It's often pretty poor. This is like the top shelf version of that data. Uh, this, this is going to be very appealing to somebody who's kind of used to that sort of process of trying to learn about a, a place before going in there. It's not going to provide what the consumer analytics was, which is giving you a, a tailored proposal say, hey, uh, this type of business needs this, 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 and this. This space has this, 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 and this. You can go get them. That's, that's different than what they're providing. Um, but this is just, I, I think of it, you know, it's, it's not the consumer analytics package. It's, it's, it's a top shelf level of, of, of city demographic data, um, commercial demographic data. Uh, so I'm sorry, I know, I know Member Moss, you're a little at sea because you, you, you didn't see that previous proposal, but, but that's what we were talking about. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, thank Member you. Answer, Mayor. So, so I guess my question too is what makes this really different than like, I mean, for example, when I when I do property searches in certain areas and stuff like that for my clients who are who are buyers searching for properties, I get a lot of this data on our MLS site already. It's there, um, and I can link to different areas, and it automatically has all this stuff in it. Um, how is this different than I mean, you know, because I can go onto LoopNet and tell you what's what's available as far as commercial, and then how is this different than just working with another commercial? agent who already has a lot of this data and they're using it daily. So what it, it seems like it's a duplicated effort to me. And is that data that you pay for? It, it's automatically, that's what we use in our daily business. 
I mean, so basically, th- this is this is something for a business that is interested in finding out information. Yeah, I this understand. Is free and commercial, commercial brokers have the, this same detailed information. I, I see <laughs> Member Green shaking her head. So we, we can, <laughs> go ahead and jump in. We can have a discussion here. It's fine. <laughs> but not everybody is used like not everybody uses a broker at the beginning. So that's where I think it's useful. Like if you're if you're a small business owner that is trying to figure out where to situate yourself and you don't you're not at the point where you want a broker or need a broker, you can't even figure out if you can afford to open a storefront. This gives you um, this gives you more information than I've seen anywhere. I mean, I, you know, I just sat through the presentation. I was like, oh my God, like, cause that's where my perspective is as a small business owner trying to help businesses. So not as a- So and how would you know to look for this? To go <laughs> on to the city website. Yeah, so this is part of, yeah, what we're going to do an outreach program to provide it to businesses and, and as well as the community. And it's going to be housed on our economic development webpage that we'll create. And- so it's, we're going to make it as easy as possible for people to access the information. This is all about making sure that people have a place to go to access information on their own. And so it'll cut down on staff time and make sure that, um, you know, it's just always accessible for people at whatever stage they're in. And if I may add also, this is one of the building blocks, you know, mm-hmm. of as we ramp up economic development in, in Albany. Um, so this is one of the items that staff is working on, uh, and our outreach is, uh, you know, is really, really important because you can have the best product, but if no one right. knows about it, um, you know, it, if it sits there and it's not being used then that defeats the purpose. So there's going to be a lot of outreach associated with, um, the launch of this, um, new program. Okay. Uh, member Moss. Okay, I, you know, I it it almost sounds a, a little bit like it, uh, Jennifer's worried that that uh, this is kind of alleviating one of the gates to the to the information. This is going a little more direct to potential businesses that might uh, want to, you know, come to Albany. Um, I'm wondering if if there'd be some way, is there something on this site that's going to say, you know, if this all looks good to you, you know, here are potential commercial realtors in Albany that you might want to, you know, get more information from or use to, you know, go after uh, a particular place. So this is so this is an element for information. Again, we're going to have an economic economic development web page where that type of thing would be housed. So, so that's where it's. This is this is information that can be provided on an economic economic development web page, and from there, it will create more of a. It, it's it's there to generate interest. It's there to generate the conversation, and then from there, here are the next steps. That type of thing. So. Okay. I, I would. It, it seems unlikely that the city is going to recommend a particular commercial. Yeah, well, yeah, that's true. We couldn't. But but that would but, be something you could have on the chamber side or the SEA side. Exactly, it? and we will. You know. Yes. Correct. All right. Very good. All right. Other uh, discussion. I just as as I see this presentation, I think back to when I started with the Chamber of Commerce. It's been. 16 years ago now and and seeing their oh just really kind of pitiful <laughs> demographics page and how long it sat there and I see something like this and I know how excited I would be if I was a business owner uh, looking for this sort of information I think it is a great building block to uh, this project of building a kind of a, a welcome to Albany uh, Albany is a great place to do business portal and so I, I think that's the way we need to keep this in mind it, it doesn't substitute for the other things that we've been looking at and with that, I would thank uh, staff and thank uh, Mr. Gillis. And I think uh, we can close the item unless there's any final words. Thank you so much, Mr. Gillis. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. All right. Very good. Bringing it back then. Uh, so uh, item 6-1, uh, re- reorganization of subcommittee. Uh, subcommittee, this is 
this is the name of the subcommittee, a subcommittee to facilitate and provide input on potential business uses for vacant properties, new developments, as well as provide input on a business recruitment and retention plan with a particular focus on women, BIPOC and LGBTQA plus own businesses when it comes when it comes to the, okay. So um, basically I asked for this item to be added because I wanted to join that subcommittee. So I just just uh, wanted to kind of make that official. So that's really the only thing we're doing here is just I'm saying I'm going to join that committee. So um, so that's good. And and then hopefully we can uh, 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 just, it'll be, it'll be uh, keep it moving forward. Any, uh, any, I don't know if we need any discussion and comment questions public comment, not seeing anything. All right, uh, we will move on then to item 6-2, subcommittee report. So that would be member Green and member Hanson Romero. Um, so member Hanson Romero and I met with um, a member of the Albany Arts Com Committee or council, whatever they're called, the C. Um, Peter Goodman and um, talked about some um, some ideas, some that were very large vision and some that seemed more immediately uh, approachable. Um, and so I just put together this little um, very short document with a couple of them on there. Um, so can I share the screen? Can I share my screen? Yeah, you should be able to. Yeah. Okay. Um, wait now. Wait, can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so we talked about um, we talked about a lot of other things, but these are the ones that seem like maybe we could start thinking about um, sooner rather than later. Um, and utility box art. I'm just, I put descriptions of these things in there in case people didn't know what they were. Um, and um, we talked about how to find out more about um, how that could happen, which we're going to work on that. Um, Jennifer, do you want to add anything to that? I'm, no. Just I jump didn't. in. Just yeah, jump yeah. in. <laughs> no worries. Okay. Um, because I, I talk <laughs> fast. Um, the Global Wings Project. Um, which um, I knew but didn't really understand actually till um, uh, Council Member Hanson Romero explained it. Why don't you explain it? Because it is pretty cool. Well, you know, I mean, it, it started out by, uh, you know, I had seen these wings in different uh, locations and areas and people taking pictures of them and, you know, to help build our social media presence. Um, this is actually a particular artist, but there's other artists that do similar types of um, things like, yeah, this is a different artist, but um, it's it has a positive me message and um, you probably read more about it than I did actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> I kind of gla glazed over some of it, but um, they're really cool and, and it, it really draws people together and um, it, you know, it encourages uh, Instagram shares, it encourages a lot of social media shares to bring focus to the area and then people want to go there. It ends up becoming a destination. Um, it's something that the uh, Solano Avenue Association has had kind of on a wish list and we've, you know, identified a couple of different locations that we felt would be good. Uh, there's some challenges with, you know, working with uh, property owners and also, you know, the funding of it because to hire an artist um, and pay for the, the actual paint for the mural and everything else and, and scaffolding um, can be uh, some, you know, financial constraint there. And so this was something that we talked about maybe being able to partner with uh, the arts committee, um, but then there's some some, you know, depending on whether it's public space or private space, what their funds can and can't be used for. Um, so that was some of some of the questions that kind of came up. And anyway, I'll let you continue on. Sorry. <laughs> no, that was great. Thank you. Um, so the one of the best things about it is it gets people to come to the area who are really looking for a photo op, but of course in Albany, one would hope then they'll buy a cup of coffee or, you know, 
go get a pizza or something like that. Um, one thing that um, this doesn't have a picture attached because why would I? But um, uh, the Albany Arts Committee is look would love to um, sort of have some regular performance spaces like the um, the area next to the art gallery that has Christmas trees um, and um, sort of take it maybe, you know, along the lines of COVID cello where it would be a regular performance space every quarter or something and an afternoon of performances. Um, that I don't, we didn't talk anything about how that would be executed. Um, so the arts committee has this fund called Art in Public Places that has about $100,000 in it and um, just waiting to be used. But the thing is, it needs to be used on permanent projects. And so one of the ideas was to um, figure out if it would be possible to work with the city to create a public bathroom that was partially funded by this art in public places. Um, <laughs> there weren't a lot of examples. This, <laughs> that's in Taiwan or somewhere. I, I wouldn't want to go to the bathroom in a see-through bathroom, but I was trying to find a photo right at the time. <laughs> and it's certainly artistic. So, um, and then the last thing we talked about was um, to, because they can't use their funds for signage, but they can use it for art that has the name Albany that is placed in a logical place, um, like on the border. So, that was, this is a huge example of some town in Mexico, but, um, but yeah, so those were kind of the, of the ideas that we talked about, those were the ones that um, seemed maybe feasible to pursue. So that's it, unless Jennifer, you have something else to say. Well, I just want to kind of pop a little bit back in on the, um, you know, the funds that are allowed to be used for certain things. And when I brought up, you know, the, uh, the bathroom um, idea was to be able to do something visually um, intriguing and artistic, uh, something that could be created um, as an artistic feature. Um, but then the arts committee funding would only be able to be used for the exterior building, the, the, that part of it, the city would still uh, then have to bring in funds to, to do the plumbing and, and the other stuff inside to actually make it functional. <laughs> but it was an idea of, of being able to utilize funds to do two things or to use two types of funds to get one big thing accomplished and to kind of alleviate the um the costs there so all right thank you very much uh, i'm delighted that you folks uh, took some action on this and, and provided that report are there uh, are there questions uh, before we go for public comment i'm not seeing any hands oh i see a uh, member chasty please uh, thanks for doing this Albany is almost an art desert, and we really need to get some public art in Albany. It's a great thing. Thanks for doing it. Thank you. All right, other, other questions? Not seeing any, open it up for public comment. We'll give uh, the caller a, a moment. And the caller has had enough moments to press a couple buttons on their phone, so we can bring it back uh, for discussion. The, uh, any comments you'd like to share? I would just say that I've, I've always liked the, uh, the wings idea. A few years ago, I asked my daughter uh, what we could do to bring you know, a younger demographic to Solano Avenue. And she basically, she said, selfie opportunities. So I think that's, that's a great idea. Uh, Member Carlton. I was just gonna comment. I also really like the idea of the wings. I could totally see people coming specifically for that. Um, and I also love the idea of a public bathroom. I, you know, I'm always amazed that Albany doesn't have one. Um, and when you say that it needs to be put though on a permanent, a, a permanent structure, or I can't remember exactly the term that you used, but I was wondering, could the wings be put on the public bathroom? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. I mean, the answer certainly is, is combine, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Combine a few of them. Like everybody wants their picture of selfie in front of a bathroom, right? <laughs> well, now that bathroom in Taiwan, I mean, provided nobody's in it, maybe. Right, maybe. <laughs> so, yeah, right, thank so, you for meeting. Good idea. Very good. Very good. Uh, Member Moss. Okay. Um, yeah, I, you know, I'm going to sound like an echo here, but yes, thank you for for kind of taking this to the next step of, of of figuring out some things that we could do. And yes, I love the 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 wings idea. I think that would be a a fairly economic uh, ne economically possible one to do. Um, the bathroom is something. I, I think it's a great idea. It certainly was discussed at various times while I was on council. Um, and, but it's, you know, if you start from scratch and building a bathroom somewhere, say along Solano Avenue, the, you're gonna need a, a, a major amount of funds uh, for the plumbing, the electrical, the, the, the building. And um, so it's, you know, as much as I think it's a great idea, I don't know that that's something that council is going to put at the top of the list. Although there are other sources of, of money that could contribute to something like that, um, uh, say the soda tax that we do every year. Um, it seems that's at least as connected to health issues as bicycle crossing guards at um, Ocean View. Um, so, you know, if, if this were to come up before council, I, I would I think that would be useful to point point out. Um, so, you know, wherever we could provide art, be it a place for selfies or, you know, you know, more sculptural in design. Or I also love the idea of uh, uh, performance spaces. I think anything that brings people and collects people together along the avenue is going to have a uh, spillover into people going into shops to eat or drink or whatever. Um, um, so, um, I, you know, just a, a positive, uh, you know, look at, at what you've done. All right. Thank you. Uh, Member Hans Romero. Hi, just sorry. Why, just to elaborate further, um, the bathroom idea also where the location um, I was thinking more along the lines of would be like under the BART tracks along uh, Masonic. And part of one of the reasons that the bathroom is also kind of important to uh, the shopping district as well and the economic piece of it is, you know, for many years, myself included, um, having younger kids and being out on the street and then all of a sudden they have to go to the bathroom and you can't really find necessarily a, a, a place to go some a lot of you know, the shops or restaurants along Solano Avenue don't always necessarily have public restrooms. And so sometimes it's difficult to, to find that, you know, and so we've heard from people, other people as well saying, oh, I would have stayed and shopped longer on Solano had I had a place to use the restroom that was close by. So, um, and being the location of underneath the BART tracks, I don't know if there's and I'm sure maybe those funds got exhausted a long time ago, but I didn't know, is there some sort of partnership still with BART that maybe they would pay for a portion of the funding um, or even AC Transit who has a, a bus stop near that location of Masonic and Solano and being able to utilize, I mean, AC Transit, uh, you know, put in funding towards parklets, but what about a parklet with a restroom underneath the BART track location. I'm just looking at trying to find different pieces of different areas where money could be pulled from in order to uh, create that one piece, that one thing that I think that we are desperately missing um, in our district, so. All right, thank you. And, and I, I, uh, I, I mean, back when we were doing the, the initial kind of layout for when the city was kind of reclaiming the Greenway, uh, I don't know, 12 years ago, 10, 12. Uh, I was always pushing for a large public space right at Solano on the Greenway that would be a performance space and kind of a public square 
And that would be a good place for a restaurant. I still like that idea. I think that's a great idea. The only problem is it's some of the only open space we have. And for performance space, it's pretty inconvenient to have trains going over it all the time. So there's that, but, but I think uh, that would work. Uh, all right. Um, so, so maybe I can and ask staff for a minute to, to kind of spell out a little bit how something like this would work, kind of a co-project between the committees. I mean, that's a good question. So basically, um, the, and, and there's a lot of like Brown Act, like, you know, if, if, if certain things are said or like, like, there's a lot that could be subject to the Brown Act that if, if that was the case, we would want to make it a public meeting. Um, in terms of brainstorming projects like this, they can talk about, you know, uh, the, this, this subcommittee can talk with the respective arts subcommittee um, and exchange ideas to essentially be brought back, reported to like this subcommittee will report to the EDC to have any projects be, you know, for any projects that would apply to their work plan. Arts committee could bring back projects that could apply to their work plan. Or if you wanted to come have a, have a, uh, make a joint decision we would just create need to create a new meeting, like a special meeting for that, where that is um, uh, sort of decided on. But mm -hmm. so, so it sounds like you're saying, um, uh, kind of, if we want to take the lead and kind of move this forward, we should come up with a proposal, and then that would be presented to the arts committee. Well, n not necessarily. So you, the EDC, can look at that, come up with a proposal um, for something the EDC like decides on and that, or maybe you provide information to the arts committee. So maybe the arts committee has a project that's already on their work plan. And this subcommittee provides information for the arts committee subcommittee to present to the arts committee for their consideration for their project. So a lot of these might end up on the arts committee work plan for them to decide, but this subcommittee gets to kind of provide information based on their, the economic perspective of it. Okay, okay, all right, uh, very good. Um, so uh, I would ask the, the subcommittee if um, you kind of established any next points of contact or next, next plan. And it's okay if you didn't, I don't wanna put you on the spot, I'm just asking. Um, I think his thinking, because their meeting is next week, so I think he was thinking that he would take this and then present it to his committee on Monday when they meet. Um, okay. And then beyond that, no, because we had to end abruptly because oh. we ran out of time. <laughs> oh, sure. And, and, and it's going to depend on what happens at that meeting, so obviously, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, there, there are projects, and I see the, the live... Uh, concert type thing. That's something I feel like could fall under EDC because it's, you know, you have, you've had on your work plan things for events to boost economics. And that's something where I think that that's something that EDC could take on. Um, but just, just, just an idea. And, and real quick, again, a question for staff. Can you say a word about the city being involved in art on, on private property? Uh, so can you just say a word about that? Is that something we just can't be involved in at all? Or can we encourage or? Isabel, yeah, I think it would yeah. be better. <laughs> yes, um, yes, we've had, a, we, yeah, with the Arts Committee, we've worked on um, a, a potential mural on a private property. It's a little more complicated because you're using public funding on private property. So it does require that, um, you know, the uh, agreement uh, is with the property owner and the artist, um, but it is possible to use public art funding on private property. I wouldn't say all the public art funding should be on, uh, you know, private property, uh, but, but it is, uh, we've worked through some of that in the past. Uh, you are using public funds to increase the value of a property potentially. So I can see how that would be. Mm -hmm, exactly. That could get sticky real fast. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yes. You. It is a lot easier for a private business to kind of put the art on their own property if they felt so inclined. Yeah. Um, but so, then, yeah, go ahead. And, and that's, you know, the, the, as I was thinking about the wings, you know, it's a fair, if the ideally it'd be the best, the most straightforward way to go about it would be to find a property owner who's interested in hiring an artist and funding that artist's uh, work on their property. That would be 
you know, the, the easiest, most straightforward way to, uh, to get wings on Solano. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was thinking of the, or uh, San Pablo. Of, well, it's, it's not so dissimilar from the facade improvement program where the, where the, the city was putting money in to help people improve the appearance of their business. Um, mm -hmm. Very good. All right. Uh, uh, member Mon I think you're muted there, Pete. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, certainly the the bike stands that uh, the uh, strollers and rollers have put up and down Solano Avenue, although not exactly art projects, there's an artistic, you know, aspect to those as well as some practical. And I, as far as I know, there were no uh, city funds that were used to uh, put those up. And that was strictly... Uh, the businesses would uh, and and some money uh, put together by strollers and rollers um, that that funded those those things. So I, I think there's an appetite to do that kind of improvement amongst uh, business owners. Um, and I you know there's probably less sites to to do a mural on a sidewall uh, than there are sites to put up a bike stand. But uh, in any case, I, I don't think the the funding aspect is necessarily going to fall on the city to do something like this. All right, thank you. And Member Hans Romero. So I'll say we have uh, checked into looking directly uh, to business owners who to have them hire a muralist on their own. Problem is um, that it can get quite costly for murals. Murals are, tend to be very expensive, um, usually in the five to 10,000, sometimes more range. Mm. Um, and therefore a lot of the business owners don't have that kind of deep pockets to do stuff like that. Um, you know, and, and so, and the SAA, you know, obviously doesn't have the funds to, to put forward money to assist in that. But what I was thinking is that the city could potentially um, use some of the art fund money as maybe perhaps grants to businesses who would like to apply for a grant to pay for um, a mural to be put on. And maybe perhaps that might be a, a workaround approach um, if that's a possibility. All right, thank you. Uh, Member Chasty. Uh, yeah, did you guys, uh, maybe you know the answer to this. Have you checked with the utility companies with regard to the art on the boxes? That's actually one of the steps that we did talk about taking and I'm gonna look into that before the next meeting. Yeah, I'd be surprised if the arts committee hasn't already done that. He, he no? didn't seem to think they had. Okay. And there might be a program there for somebody to uh, decorate the boxes, who knows? All right. Any other further discussion? Questions, comments? Not seeing any, I think we can close this item then. Uh, next item is just future agenda items. Anything that we uh, feel we'd like to have on the agenda? Of course, if you don't come up with it now, you can always email Brennan and, and we can add it. I, I very much appreciate the progress that the subcommittees are make, me, uh, making and I encourage everybody to continue meeting, moving things forward. I don't think anything came up in this meeting that we would particularly be adding, correct? I don't remember any discussion. All right, very good. Then um, I think we can uh, mention our next meeting is the 7th, April 7th. And I will uh, think we're going to join the meeting. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Good night.